Hey, welcome to our YouTube page. We're so excited to be with you today. We hope this message encourages you and inspires you. But if you miss Sunday, don't worry about it. You can go to the link below in our description, click the link and enjoy the full service experience. And we will see you next time online. everyone and welcome to Bridge Online. It's fantastic to see you all again. Thank you so much for inviting us into your home. We appreciate it and um, we hope you've enjoyed the service so far. We're going to have a fantastic time um, going forward as well. And so I just want to invite those of you who are here for the very first time. If you are online with us and have never joined a Bridge service before, we want to welcome you especially. Thank you for joining us and we'd love to be able to contact you. So if you can contact us on our WhatsApp line, which is 82 736 We'd love to chat with you, help you understand who we are, what we do, how we do it, and then get you involved in Fast Forward because Fast Forward is your next step. Fast Forward will help you to understand who you are, um, who we are, and how you can get integrated. And it's really, really valuable. And I think it'll be very beneficial to you. So make sure that you contact us and we'd love to get you plugged in with that. And so right now, before we get going on the word, I'd just like to pray. Father, we just thank you for your love. We thank you for your presence. We pray, Lord, that today you will open our minds, open our hearts to receive what you've got for us today. We're excited for what you're going to do in this place. And I just really pray that in every way, your hand will be on what we do. Your hand will be on every single person listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, we're going to kick off with a new series where we talk about the concept and the principle of unity. And so by way of a title, we're going to be discussing discovering the power of unity, discovering the power of unity, because there is power in unity. And the awesome thing about that is that we want to include unity into all areas of our life, not because it's going to be beneficial, although it is, but because God wants us to include unity in all areas of our life. It's important enough to be able to be a unified um, group of people. And in all areas of our life, it's going to be beneficial. So let's Let's first look at the definition of unity. It is the state of being united or joined as a whole. In other words, togetherness or oneness, being of one mind, thinking alike. And so when we understand the concept of what unity is, it's going to help us go forward. The other thing is, what is unity? Why is, why is unity actually so important? Well, unity is actually needed for survival. In fact, it's so interesting because if you, if you are living in unity and we're in a group of people and you're all friends, we get to help each other. We get to support each other in circumstances and situations that we might be facing. So that helps us survive whatever challenge that we might be facing. But it's also interesting that in nature, we actually see in so many circumstances, two completely different species coming together in a unified way, in a mutualistic, symbiotic relationship where both parties actually benefit. And in fact, one of them is the ox pecker and a zebra or a rhino or a buffalo. If you've ever seen, maybe in the Kruger Park, you'll see animals together like, like the rhino or the buffalo, but there's a bird on top of it, and that is actually called the ox pecker. And what the ox pecker does is they eat the parasites off the animal, and obviously the animal then doesn't have to struggle with the parasite, and the ox pecker gets his food. So it's a mutualistic um, relationship where both parties actually benefit. Secondly, when there's danger around, the ox pecker flies up really high and starts creating such a noise and such a vibe that it actually warns all the animals around it. And that obviously helps them survive. That literally helps them survive because it helps them understand that there's danger right around the corner. Flowers and bees are another example. The bees take pollen from one plant to the next and pollinate the flowers. And then they take the nectar to, to make uh, honey, which is awesome. I'm really glad we've still got bees around because honey is amazing. And so again, a symbiotic relationship where both parties are benefiting. Another relationship is humans and plants. It's, it's commonly known that humans and plants cannot actually function without each other. We need the oxygen to breathe, which the plants produce, and the plants need the carbon dioxide, which we breathe out, to be able to grow and to flourish themselves. So again, this unity, this idea of a symbiotic, mutualistic relationship is what's so important. So in our context, in our human context, what is unity really? 
Well, firstly, it's the combination of an arrangement of parts into a whole. Combination or arrangement of parts into a whole. This is exactly how the human body is actually wired. It's how we're created. We're made up of thousands of different kinds of cells, all with a specific purpose in mind, all having something specific to do, their own role, which then builds and develops and grows and creates a human body. And so in the same way with us, we're all different people. We all come from different backgrounds. We all um, have different cultures, different belief structures. And yet God wants us to come together to be able to be a unified um, body of Christ and a unified body together to be able to function at the optimum, to be a healthy body for him. And again, to have a purpose in mind, to be able to go out and make disciples who make disciples. And so secondly, the oneness of mind and harmony or agreement is another definition of what unity is and why it's so important because it's a oneness of mind, harmony or agreement. If we have a, a single minded purpose, if we have a, a, a purpose that we're all agreeing to go towards, a goal towards, we're all thinking alike, a one mindedness approach that then helps to be on the same page for the same purpose and to be able to function in a healthy environment. So we also see in the spiritual realm that unity is incredibly important. In fact, unity needs to be built. In, in John 10 verse 30, it says, I and the Father are one. Already talking about the fact that the Father and Jesus are one. There's this oneness. There's a, there's a symbiotic relationship. They are in unity together and there is a harmony that exists. Unity actually has the power to take us from strength to strength. It is in all areas of our life. So if we look at our marriages, for example, if we had unity in our marriages, they would then grow and develop and be much stronger in that relationship. In Genesis 2 verse 24, it says, this explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united as one. Again, talking about a unified relationship, unity being the core and what is most important. In a business and in other key relationships, the same applies. In 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14, it says, don't become partners with those who reject God. How can you make a partnership out of right and wrong? That's not partnership, that's war. Clearly explaining how to become a partner with somebody who's not like-minded or who doesn't have a unified approach to their partnership is actually quite dangerous. We need to be careful who we're partnering with and we need to be making sure that we are unifying in all those kinds of relationships, even partnership relationships. But also in the church environment, Paul writes to the early Roman church and he actually helps us to understand why unity is so important. He says in Romans 15 verse 5, May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus, so that one with heart and mind and mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to our God. So Paul lays out three purposes of being unified, three things that we, we can have a look at to be able to create this unified relationship. First, when we worship God, when we worship in uh, unification together in a collective passion and a collective voice, then we're already being more unified. We need to learn to worship really well together. Also to be able to accept others. We need to learn to accept all kinds of people, all kinds of people that come into the church, all kinds of people that we come across in our lifestyles. When we accept people, we're already creating a unified relationship. And thirdly, we bring glory to God when we do those things. So it culminates in bringing glory to God. So this really highlights that in a church experience and in their church life, we, it's it's up to us to be able to create that uni unified um, approach and a unified relationship by doing those things. When we worship together, we accept people together and we bring glory to God. So for that reason, if we have any antagonism towards another person or if there's any antagonistic relationships, it means that we're not living in a unified manner and it means we're not living in the pattern that God actually laid out for us. So we need to make sure that we're trying to live more unified than ever before in a harmonious way and not have antagonistic relationships. So let's have a look at some of the aspects as to why unity is so powerful. Firstly, it creates acceptance and brings people 
together. So incredible that it brings people together because we're wired to feel like we need to be belonging in some kind of way. If we think of the um, Olympic flag, for example, the five rings actually represent the original countries where the athletes came from to then compete amongst each other in a unified manner. So the interlocking rings of these different countries or these different athletes represents and invites different nations of all different kinds to come together in a unified manner to be able to compete with each other on a sport. Um, environment. And so the unity is what is actually important. And so our Christian lives are similar. In fact, Christ's mandate on the earth was to actually bring the nations together because the Jews and the Gentiles at the time were actually antagonistic towards each other. They did not see eye to eye at all. And in fact, the Jews saw themselves as more superior than the Gentiles. And so Paul actually illustrates in Romans how to actually disseminate that. And we can learn from that as well. In, in Romans 15 verse 8, it says, For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the Jews on behalf of God's truth to confirm the promises made of the patriarchs so that the Gentiles may glorify God in his mercy as it is written. Therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles. I will sing hymns to your name. So they came together. They needed to be a unified force so that they could praise God the way that God wanted to be praised. It was a purpose-driven unification. And so Paul disseminates the whole difference between Jews and Gentiles because they needed to be unified for a specific purpose. And so we need to learn to accept all kinds of people in the same way. You know, it is really important because acceptance is actually the foundation of unity. Acceptance is the starting block of creating a unified relationship. So the question really is, how accepting are we of different kinds of people? Do we accept different races? Do we accept different ages and cultures and, and belief structures? And do we accept all kinds of people? Are we willing to cross that racial barrier? Are we willing to build relationships with very different kinds of people, whether they're different social standing or different educational standing to ourselves. Let's make sure that we're accepting all kinds of people. And in Romans 12 verse 16, it says, live in harmony with one another. So clearly it tells us how to do that. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low disposition. Do not be conceited. Again, there's different kinds of people with different education levels, different status backgrounds, all kinds of people we need to learn to accept and to relate to and become one with so that unity can actually be created. And this means it's actually up to us in every area of our life. So if we look at different facets of our life, church life, for example. God wants us to work together in church. He wants us to, again, come as a group alongside each other and actually build the church of God, to build God's kingdom. And it's so important to understand that because it's not so easy. In our humanity, we can sometimes think, well, you know, I don't like that person. So how must I be unified with that person? There may be somebody you just don't get along with. There might just not be an element that makes it really difficult to have this unification occur. And I love what Pastor Lisa Bevere says. She says, don't mistake co-laborers for competitors. You know, if we're going towards the same goal and we're all working towards making disciples who make disciples and we've all got a common goal in mind, then why would we compete with each other? Why would we compare ourselves to other people? God designed every single one of us as a unique, independent person with specific skills and gifts. So to compare ourselves with other people who are actually on the same side actually seems a little bit crazy. So why do we do it? We need to take that humanity away, know that God wants us to be unified as a whole. And if we're working for the same goal, it's going to make so much more um, impact if we're doing it together than we would independently. So let's not let our insecurities override what God wants to do in the church. Let's not let our insecurities and our faults be part of this unifying process, but rather let unification and our unified relationship override all of those things. So how do we practically achieve that in church life? Well, first of all, we need to share the same common values. You know, Bridge has um, certain values that if all of us live by and all of us really believe in, we're already unified. We choose to love God, love people, discover our purpose and to gain influence. So if we all believe in that and we're all working towards that and living our lives that way, we're already more unified than we would be than if we didn't. Secondly, we need to make sure that we are committed to the vision. Bridges' vision is all in. And so if we live our life all in in our family, all in in our church life, all in our businesses, all in in our finances, in every area of our life, 
when we live all in, again, we are already living in a unified manner as a unified church. And thirdly, if we are committed to serving, if we place the same amount of value on serving and giving, then we're all in a unified, like-minded way frame of mind to be able to live in a unified way. And so let's remain committed. Let's remain committed to our serving. Let's remain committed to our giving. Let's make sure that it's still a priority. Let's make sure that it's still very important to us because as we're all seeing how important that is, the whole church is on the same page. So let's give of our time, our talent and our treasure and consistently make sure that unification is a priority. God wants us to be a unified church of God so it can grow and flourish. Secondly, in our businesses, you know, when a, when a colleague gets a promotion, how do we respond? Do we respond where we're like, while well, we're thinking about how they got there or a bad motive as to why they shouldn't be getting that promotion? Or do we celebrate with them? Do we celebrate the fact that my role also is important, even though they might have been celebrated at this moment in time? Let's be confident in the fact that whatever we're contributing to the organization also matters. Even though somebody else might be promoted one time, you might be promoted another time. We need to confident, be confident in that and make sure that every aspect of what we're doing is seeing the goal in mind. We want to build the business, grow the business at the same time, make sure that that purpose is done in a unified manner. So how do we practically do that? Well, if you own your own business, we need to make sure that we hire the right people. Hiring the right people is incredibly important, that you're all on the same page, that they have some similar values and a similar like-minded way of doing business. The three C's are so important as well. Chemistry, competence, and character. If you can get somebody who taps those three elements in line with the way that you value your business and you have values that are in line with who they are, then it's going to be a sustainable relationship and unity can form. Secondly, we need to communicate our values. The more often we communicate our values to our staff or the people that we work with, the more likely we are to be on the same page, the more likely we are to be unified in the way that we do business. And then thirdly, create an atmosphere of working through tough times together. All businesses go through ups and downs, trials and challenges, personal trials, challenges, circumstances. If we can invite uh, and create an environment where we're, we're there for each other, it's a caring environment where we can be compassionate with each other, that we can understand where each other's at. There's going to be a unified approach as to how we're going to then help each other along and get through those circumstances and get through those trials and challenges. So let's make sure that we're also relating to each other in our businesses. And so thirdly, relationships. When we have a unified approach to our relationships, it means that we understand that two individuals or a family of individuals is making up that family unit or making up the marriage partnership. Individuals need to remain individuals, but also need to be unified together. You don't lose your individuality when you get married, but you also don't lose the fact that you need to come together thinking that every party brings something to the family and every person brings something to the relationship. And by doing that, you then are able to be even more successful. The business is able to be more successful. The family is be able to be more successful. Whatever you produce, whatever group or environment you're in, more people like-minded in a unified manner are going to succeed and achieve a whole lot more than you would as one isolated person. So in our relationships, let's understand that everybody contributes something and everybody contributes something valuable. So how do we practically achieve that in our relationships? Well, we need to be op open and honest with each other. Let's communicate often. Also, we need to actively show how we care for each other, whether it's a marriage or in a friendship or in a, in a, a family relationship environment. Let's show each other how much we care. Show each other practically what you mean to me. Thirdly, we need to make sure that what we're doing together actually are things that we enjoy doing. Do things that we all enjoy doing together as a family. Maybe you enjoy hiking. Maybe you enjoy camping together. Those are fun things that you can do as a family that create unity. It creates a bond. It increases the fact that value of each other's input and value of who each other are as independent people places uh, an incredible amount of value on creating that unity in the family. So unity states that you're actually part of something. You're part of something bigger than an individual. We want to all feel like we're included, that we're accepted, and that we belong to something. We need to be able to 
feel like we belong to a group. That's why connect groups are actually so important. If you're not yet involved in a virtual connect group, make sure you contact us on our WhatsApp line and we can get you plugged in to a virtual connect group. It is so important. It's so important to stay connected with other people. It's important to stay connected to God and to other people. And so let us know and we'll contact you and get you into the appropriate and the right connect group specifically for you. Unity is also the glue. It is the glue that brings people together. It's what helps everything stick together. It strengthens the team in a work environment or in a church environment. It strengthens the body of Christ. So let's work together in every area to achieve this unity. Matty Stepanek, who is actually a very young 13-year-old boy, he died at the age of 13, but he also produced, before that age, he produced seven bestsellers of poetry and philosophy. He was, a, he was known as a very good poet and philosopher at the age of 13. And this is what he said. He said, unity is strength. Where there is teamwork and collaboration, wonderful things can be achieved. Such great wisdom from such a young person and something that we can actually learn from. Unity is created. Created, and so much more can it be achieved in collaboration when we're getting along with each other, when we're all on the same page and we're all like-minded. Secondly, the, the next power of unity is that it prevents division and conflict. You know, disunity is actually like a cancer. Our cells are, in our body all have a function. It's all created to build the body as a human being, a healthy body. It has a function and every cell has a function. But over time, those cells get old and they die off and new cells are replenished. But what happens in a cancerous situation is that those old dying cells actually don't die off. They remain there and the new cells are still being produced. So you end up having more cells in the body than your body actually needs. So then the the, 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 the older cells, the decaying cells or the mutant cells are still reproducing themselves and they're re reproducing bad cells, unhealthy cells. And so that then forms a tissue which then becomes a tumor. And if that tumor is left unchecked or isn't treated, then it can actually override the body and the body then dies off. So God created the body, the people of the church to grow the body of Christ, to grow God's kingdom. But when there is offense, where there is hurt, where there is um, issues and damage that occurs, they tend to talk and breed more hurt and more pain. And that then multiplies and the negativity multiplies, a bit like the cells that were then multiplying, the negative broken, damaged cells start multiplying and then they become tumors and unfortunately the damage then starts occurring in the church and we see a dissemination of unity in the church. So people who talk negatively are then becoming divisive and the division starts occurring in the church and God tells us not to have anything to do with a divisive person and so we need to make sure that we are relating well to people so that the division doesn't actually occur. In Mark 3 verse 24 it says, if a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. So we often see that in business or in the church life, so many people think that they, are that they are doing the right thing. They believe that they're saying the right thing by criticizing other people or by voicing their opinion or by speaking their mind. But actually, they're just breaking down the fiber. They're breaking down the fabric of that environment, the fabric of the church or the organization. And it actually ends up being detrimental to the organization as a whole. But unity actually prevents this. Unity is a bit like an antibiotic that fights the infection and can actually heal those bad cells or those, uh, that, that health being restored. In 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10, it says, I appeal to you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another so that there may be no divisions among you, that you may be perfectly united in mind and thought. You know, just as he addresses them as brothers, Paul actually highlights the fact that unity is important just in that statement alone. Because as we come alongside him and as we all have the similar mindset, we're actually part of one family. We're becoming part of a family, of a group, again, belonging and becoming part of a family where unity is so important. So being in agreement doesn't mean that we have to be completely the same kind of people. It doesn't mean we all have to think exactly the same. Our individuality matters, but there is a big difference between opposing views and being divis divisive. We need to make sure that the divisive element doesn't come in. We obviously can have our views, but let's make sure that unity is occurring and that we are living in a harmonious way with the elements that actually do matter, like that Jesus is actually Lord of all. Those elements are really important. Those are the things that are important. 
in 1 Peter 3 verse 8, it says, Finally, all of you living in harmony with with one another, be sympathetic, love as brothers, be compassionate and humble. So we see that harmony, sympathy, love, compassion and humility are vital ingredients of unity. Those elements are massively important to create create unity. Let's have a humility about us. Let's be compassionate with the people around us. Let's be sympathetic to those who are going through tough, tough times and therefore harmony will apply. Let's work together as a symbiotic, mutualistic, harmonious body or group of people that can increase and include unity in every area of our life, from our businesses to our family life to church life. In every area, when we put unity as a high priority, amazing things can be achieved. Can you imagine what would happen in our marriages if we actually lived out unity, if we lived in a harmonious way? Our marriages would be so much better. Can you imagine in our organizations or in the government if there was unity, if we accepted all kinds of people, if we lived in the way that God is planning and purposed us to live all along. Can you imagine what we could achieve? Can you imagine the world that we would be living in and how different it would be? I think that we can be catalysts to creating a world like that. We can be catalysts to create an environment where unity is rife, where we can see such incredible, amazing things being achieved and grown because of unity. So let's work at it. Let's ask God to help us in that, in every single area of our life, every day of our life. And so come, let's pray. Father, we just thank you for every person listening right now. I pray that we can create a a unified force, an environment in our worlds where unity is so important that it becomes something that is part of our daily life, part of our every single day. Father, I pray that you'll help us to do this. Help us in our relationships. Help us in our work environments, in our marriage relationships. I pray that in every area you will become part of the unity that we need. In Jesus' name, amen. And there may be some people that are watching right now. Maybe you aren't part of this family or body of Christ. Maybe you don't have a relationship with Jesus. You don't yet have a relationship with God that you can call yourself part of his family. Well, Jesus is standing right here. All he says is include me in your life. He's inviting you to invite him into your world. He doesn't say that when you accept Jesus that everything in your world is going to be wonderful and there's not going to be any trials and challenges. But he does say that he will walk through those challenges with you. He does say that he will help you through and get you through those challenges. And so he tells us how to do that. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. So all we need to do is invite Jesus into our world. We just need to pray, accept him as the Son of God, and accept him as part of our world. And then he says, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. And he who invites me in, I will dine with him and he with me. And so he's standing here asking you to invite him into your world. And all you need to do is say, yes, Jesus, please become part of my life. I want you to be my Lord, my Savior. I believe you are are the Son of God and that you will forgive all my sins. And all we need to do is then speak to Jesus and ask him to do that. So if you are online right now, watching us right now, and you'd like to make that decision, I'd love the opportunity to pray with you. I'd love to be able to commit you to Jesus right now as we speak. So come, let's pray. Father, I just pray for every single person who is online right now wanting to make that decision to include you into their life. I pray that you will be with them, that you will lead them, that you will guide them, that they will feel your presence, that there will be an undeniable sense that you are with them. Father, I pray that they will lean in on you, that they will develop an amazing relationship with you. Thank you for them, Father, and I thank you that in every way they commit their lives to you, that they understand that you forgive all their sins, that you are the Son of God, and that we can live a brand new life with you in it. And so I pray for every single person here who's made that decision. I pray that you will feel God's presence, that you will understand who he is, and that you will have an exciting and amazing journey going forward. In Jesus' name, amen. So well done to those of you who've made that decision. Congratulations, we're celebrating with you, and we'd love you to contact us. Contact us on our WhatsApp line. We'd love to help you along the way, help you along your journey, answer any questions that you might have. If you would like to press the raised hand button as well. That'll really give us an indication and be able to help you along the journey. For everybody else, join us on Fast Forward. Make sure you connect with us there and get involved in a virtual connect group. We'll see you all next time online. Thank you for joining us today. If you have made a decision to follow Christ or are with us for the first time, we'd love to hear from you. Please send us a text on WhatsApp or follow the link in the comments to the Connect With Us page. 
If you're watching on Church Online platform, click on the Connect With Us tab at the top right of the screen to complete the form and we'll be in contact with you. Let's remember to continue to each week, each one, reach one. We can't wait to see you and your guest next time online.